Hi, in this tutorial we will work with uh, some exercises on normalizing tables to 3NL. And um, again, this information you can find in the PowerPoint for the lecture of normalization. And then here we have a table that is table A that says instructor, classroom, cl classroom number, classroom text, and then functional dependencies that says the classroom number determines the classroom and the text so um it's just to remind you that even though we're looking with uh, just single letters like table a is a b c and then functional dependencies a determine b and c we're actually working with tables and constraints over there i mean so here it says that a class number determines what classroom is that class and what textbook is what they use so that makes sense and that's something that really depends on the application so for that application this is true so we use that to normalize so now instead of using the actual instructor we will say table r is i c and o c c t and the functional dependencies is c and o the term is c t so um to do this remember we will get some information so one piece of information that is useful is to determine can be the keys so we can see that c and o determines almost everything that means c and t right and c and o is not derived and i is not derived so these two will be the ones that we say uh, no incoming that should be part of every candidate key and these together make a candidate key by itself they are not candidate key so this is the only candidate key so we need to compute the f mean that we were describing in the previous tutorial and then um, here we say that the right hand side of every functional dependency should be just one single attribute. That's what we have. And then we look for redundancy. If there is no redundancy, so number two, we got that uh, the, um, the, the, the F main here. So in the procedure that is described in uh, um, PowerPoints to get normalization it says we need to find the candidate keys and then we need to find the um the f mean so that's the first step and then the third step is for the functional dependencies that on the left hand side has the same attributes we union that with the others so in this case cno and cno have the same right left hand side i'm sorry so then cno and cno will determine c and t and that will be one table then the next thing that says is the candidate key contained on uh, the table, the resulting tables. If it is well done, but we see that it's not contained, then we make another table with the candidate key, which is the step number four, the CNOI. And that's, those are the four steps. First, we get the keys, then we get the admin. And then from that mean we get the tables and then on the step number four is not on the table contain the candidate key we make an additional table so then table r becomes these two tables that the composition is r1 and r2 and then this guarantee to be um, dependency preserving and lossless so here the r1 will have this attribute this functional dependencies and r2 will have no functional dependencies associated each of the resulting tables are actually in bcnf and we were hoping just to get 3nf so we were lucky to get a bcnf here now let's see the next example so in the next example we have this table with the following functional dependencies so what is step number one Number one, we find the candidate keys. And remember, we got a procedure of doing the dependency graph. We, we identify the only incoming and no incoming. So the dependency graph comes by inspecting each one of the functional dependencies that we have here. Like C determines T, is here in the, in, the, in the dependency graph. And then the CS determines G, should be C, S together determines G, and so on. By inspecting the graph, we look at only incoming, no incoming. Now incoming is HS. If HS is a candidate key, that will be the only candidate key. That's the claim that we have. 
So we found the candidate key. That's the step number one. Step number two, we find the F name and we notice, remember the right hand side, the first step in finding them should be a single attribute, they are all single attributes. And then the next steps is to delete redundant or trivial uh, functional dependencies and all of them are redundant or trivial. So the answer is that F mean is actually the F that was given. So the next step is uh, to get tables from each of the functional dependencies. So we see C. Do we have another functional dependency that in the left hand side has a C, just a C? No. Then this CT will be a table. And that's my first table, CT. Then we go with CS and we look for another CS. There is not another CS, so CSG will be a table. So that's table R2. And then we look for the next one. HR and we look for another HR. If we find another HI, we union all the attributes of those two functional dependencies. If we find three or four or I many, we union them. So HR is the only one. So HRC should be my next table, HRC. And then the same HS, we look for another HS is the only one. So HSR will be another table, HSR. And then my last functional dependency, HTR. So remember, I'm doing that from F, but we're supposed to do that for F min. But F min and F are the same. That's what I'm doing that from there. In my previous example, I'm doing that. I did that from F min. And step number four, it says, is the candidate key in one of the tables? So HS is the only candidate key. And HS is in R4. Then we don't need to create another table. Otherwise, we add another table for that. So this will be my answer. And uh, again, this guarantees that this is at least 3 and F. And some of these tables may be uh, BCNF, or maybe like in the previous example, they are all BCNF. OK, so this is the example of how we normalize onto 3 and F. And we do this when getting into BCNF is not possible. Thank you.